So what is entropy and how does it relate to compression, data compression? Well, let's think of a random variable x that has outcomes little xi and there's n possible outcomes. Well, there's a concept of self-information which is defined as being log of the inverse of the probability of that outcome. So for each outcome, there's an idea of self-information. And what this means is the uh, less likely the event is, the more information it carries. And I think this is a natural thing when you think about it. Uh, for example, if you're a detective and you turn up at a crime scene and you ask some, someone who, an eyewitness, uh, what to describe the burglar, um, if they say that the burglar has brown hair and average height, then that's not very informative. There's not much information. Uh, the probability of that would be quite high uh, and it's not much information. Uh, and that's why uh, this inverse. If they told you that the burglar had five arms and three legs, then that would be quite interesting. That would carry a lot of information. That would help you to solve the case. The probability would be very low. So if it was a low probability, the inverse would be high and the information would be high. So there's a natural explanation to this concept of self-information. Uh, it's also, let's think about how to plot it. Uh, it's, it's also, this is because this is inverse, it's negative of log of the probability of xi. Uh, and I'll just plot that log plot uh, and um, here. So for example, this is, uh, this is log of x, uh, or, or let's say log of alpha, and this is alpha, then the plot looks like this, and I'll just draw that part with dots because most we are going to be interested in the area between, or the region between 0 and 1, and it's got a negative out the front. So this is the region of probabilities uh, in here, between 0 and 1, and as you get closer and closer to 0, the the log function gets more and more negative, increasingly sharply negative, uh, and, and then you've got the negative of that, which gives you the information. So this is the function to think about when you're thinking about self-information. Uh, there's also a concept of entropy, and entropy is simply the average of the self-information. Okay, so that's uh, here, the take the self-information, they multiply by its probability, and add them all up. This is the entropy. Okay, now what do these things mean? What are some examples of, of these things and how do they help us to do compression? Well, let's think about, for example, the English language. Uh, so the English language has letters A, a B, a C, or a C, and other languages have, have the same letters, of course. Um, and let me now write down if what number probabilities or percentages of these letters that have been found by people examining lots of books and, and literature in the English language. So in the English language, the letter A happens 8.167% of the time. The letter B happens 1.492% of the time, uh, and so on. Okay, so we can take all of these percentages, uh, and these are the outcomes. So, uh, so, so these are the potential realizations of the random variable and we convert the percentages into probabilities and we can work out the entropy of the letters in the English language. And this equals, for example, if you, if you look up this, you can look it up on Wikipedia and find these numbers. And if you put them in this formula here for the entropy, uh, where this is the probability and this is the self-information, you'll find that this is 4.176. Now, what does that mean? That is, what's the units of this? This is if we take the log to the base 2. So if we take the log to the base 2, then what, we're, what this number means is this is bits per symbol, bits per letter. Bits per, we would call it symbol, to be more general than letter. So what this means is that if you were to be uh, wanting to encode this, in bits, in binary ones and zeros, then you would require, on average, 4.176 bits to represent each of these symbols, on average. That's, what the, that's one way of interpreting entropy. 
So let me say a few more things about that. Uh, and you know, what does this mean to have a fraction of bits? Let's explore that. W one thing to do just um, uh, before then is let's think about if they were equally likely. So let's let's presume, for example, that they were all equally likely. So if these numbers here came from looking and actually counting actual literature in English to see the occurrence, the, the percentage of times these letters occurred within the words. But if they all occurred with equal probability, one on 26, then if they were that way, then the entropy would be equal to 4.7004. Uh, again, bits per symbol. Okay. So we'll come back to this in a minute, but this number here is bigger than this number. Okay, this is the one important thing to note. If all of the symbols, in this case all the letters, were equally likely, then the entropy would be higher. Okay, so let's try to understand what that means as well. Well, let me give you another example. Uh, not quite 26 letters, uh, too many to write down here. Uh, let's, let's assume we had a language that had four letters in it. Alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Let's say we had those four letters. Now if those four letters were equally likely, then they would have a probability each of a quarter. If that was the case, then the uh, entropy would be, if you put these quarter, quarter, quarter into this formula here for the entropy, then the entropy would equal two. And this is two bits per symbol. And one way to think about that and visualize it is to think how would we map these two bits if we were going to do it naively. So let me just think, okay, alpha, there's four symbols, so I probably need, I could map alpha to be zero, zero, if I'm only allowed to be zeros and ones. I could map beta to be zero and one. I could make gamma equal one, zero, and I could make delta equal one, one. And here I have a code which encodes these symbols, these letters in our alphabet, into two bits. And that's what this entropy tells us. So when they're equally likely, I can use an equal number of bits per symbol, and I will achieve a, an encoding that it achieves the same number of bits as the entropy says. So let's say there was another, uh, let's say it wasn't that they were equally likely, let's say we use these in a language, and let's say our language that we choose and we use says that alpha equals, uh, is used, let's say, half the time in the words that we create from this small alphabet here. Let's say beta was a quarter, let's say gamma was an eighth, and delta was an eighth. In this case, if this was the case, then... Uh, we can work out what the entropy is by using this formula here with these probabilities, and this would come out to equal 1.75. And in this case, I can also give you an encoder which achieves this entropy. And here it is. So this one, and the intuition is, alpha happens half the time. There's a lot of times alpha happens, so I'm going to give it a short code in my code book. I'm only going to give it one bit. So every time I send a zero, it represents an alpha. So for beta, I can't use a zero at the start, so I'm going to have to use a one, and it happens a quarter of the time, so I'm going to give it something that, a code word that lasts for two bits, and these ones, I'm going to give them code words that last for three bits. So these are unique code words, and I can uniquely decode this. In this case, if I was to look at the practical uh, uh, the uh, entropy that I get from this code book, well, one, uh, what I would be doing is if I took the average number of bits that I'm going to be using, if I'm sending it with this code book, well, half the time I'm going to use one bit, so half the time I'm going to use one bit, plus a quarter of the time I'm going to use two bits, plus an eighth of the time I'm going to use three bits, and another eighth of the time I'm going to use three bits. And the, the answer of this, if I add these things up, you can confirm it for yourself, is also 1.75. So in this case, with this code word, if this code book, I achieve the entropy if the, word, if the letters appeared with this probability. And this is compression, because if they happened equally likely, I would need two bits. But if they happen non-equally likely, then I can develop a code which compresses, and on average, I only need 1.75 bits. And this is compression. 
So if we just, from one last bit, is to step back to the English language and look at this, well, this is what you can do with compression. Because the letters don't appear equally likely, you are able to send English language using an appropriate codebook you could get away with sending on average only 4.176 bits every time for every symbol for every letter so every time you want to send a letter you would only have to use on average 4.176 bits um, you can go even further than that because this is just the probability of bits if you went to actually how those bits the rules that constrain the ordering of those letters uh, because you could look at the different words and the fact that the word the happens a lot and the word and happen a lot and other words happen less frequency less frequently you could encode collections of these letters which we call words and you could come up with a different code book which might even be better compression and for example let's look at our back to here let's say for example we had our uh, language here where every time alpha happened beta also happened directly after it in this case we would have a different code book we could make a different code book which would be alpha beta we could call that together as a symbol and then we could have gamma and delta in this case, this would happen three quarters of the time. This would happen one eighth. This would happen one eighth. And then in this case, the entropy for this, if this was the case, if we had a rule in this language that said these letters, whenever an alpha happened, a beta has to happen after it directly, then the entropy would equal 1.06, even lower. And that means we could get away with even fewer bits. Uh, how would we do an encoding of this? Well, we could give this a zero, we could give this a one and a zero, and this one we could give one, one and zero. Uh, this would be one poten potential way of an encoding for this. This one, if we average these by the, percent by the probabilities, this one would give us an entropy of one, you can work it out for yourself, but it's 1.25. So in this case, with this code book, it would certainly be less than two, it's less than 1.75. This code book would give us 1.25, but our theory tells us we could actually get a better code book, which would give us only 1.06. And so that's a challenge. How do we come up with a better code word, a code book than this? The answer is we would put even multiples or together. I won't go into it all in this video, but this theory tells us that it is actually possible to have a code book that is even better than the one that I've shown here, even though this one's quite good. You could get down to 1.06. And that is the power of this concept of entropy and understanding how you can use entropy to come up with good code books which compress the, uh, the data that you need to send so that you send less data to represent the same information, and that's compression. And this is essentially what's happening in all compression algorithms, such as uh, in, not just with letters and the English language, but colors and pixels and images for JPEG, GIF, MPEG in videos and so on. They're all using the same concept of looking at the probabilities of the events that can happen, whether they're letters or colors or what have you, and coming up with a code book which contains less bits uh, per symbol than if you were to do it in a naive way, assuming all of those outcomes were equally likely. So if you've found this video helpful, uh, please uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video on the channel. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the website below in the link below uh, where there's a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel.